Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're taking a look at Ares, an easy to use multi-system emulator that's focused on accuracy. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Ares is a free and open source multi-system emulator. It was initially developed by the legendary Nier as well as Luke Usher. It has since been carried on by Luke Usher. Ares is known as kind of a descendant of BSNES and Hygen. It's targeted for accuracy and it works with a bunch of different systems. Currently, at the time of filming, Ares works with 29 different systems. Four of those systems are considered experimental. So for the experimental systems, we've got the PlayStation, Neo Geo, AES, Microsoft MSX, and MSX2. Now in terms of features, I would argue that Ares isn't necessarily the most robust emulator out there, but at the same time, they do offer quite a bit. And one thing I find incredibly important, and that is run ahead. So if you're worried about input latency, well, run ahead might really help you out. Ares is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. On Windows, it is pretty light. The download is only six megabytes. Now in this video, I am going over the Windows installation, but if you're using this on Mac or Linux, it's pretty simple and straightforward as well. So on Windows here, once you have it downloaded, just feel free to extract it into its own folder. You don't need to set it up or anything. You can just open it right up. Once you have Ares up and running here, you'll be able to see how nice and clean the menu system is. It's very minimalistic, but very effective. If we click load here, we can see every single system that's supported. To load up a game, all we have to do is click on the system and then click on our own ROM. This does not come with any ROMs. You do have to supply your own. And just a friendly heads up here, you probably already know this, but if you're looking for Super Nintendo, it's called Super Famicom. If you're looking for Sega Genesis, it's called Sega Mega Drive. Now, before we load up a game here, there are a couple of settings I wanna go over. For size, there is two, three, or four times the size. For shader here, for some reason, mine is set to blur, but I do like it set to none. And there are a bunch of different options here you can change mid-game. It's Really just a matter of personal preference, but for me, I like to start off with none. Next up, under settings here, under boot options, I do have mine set to prefer US, and that's normally where I keep it, considering most of my ROMs are North American. You can change this depending on whatever region your ROMs are from, and you can always change it later, it's not a big deal. Uh, for show status bar, if you like seeing the FPS, just leave it checked. If you don't want to see the FPS at the bottom right, just uncheck it and you can hide it. I'm gonna keep it checked just because I wanna see how my games are running. And from here, if I click any of these options, it brings up a completely different menu altogether, and we can make some fine tuning tweaks here. In the video menu, there are a couple of things I recommend checking out. First up here is pixel accuracy mode. At the time of filming, this only works with SNES and Turbo Graphics, but I'm assuming this will get better as time goes on. Pixel accuracy mode will give you pixel accurate emulation, and that gets a big thumbs up. In addition to that, there are some special N64 settings. So if you want to enable Vulkan with N64, you absolutely can. It's completely optional though. On top of that, if you want to improve your quality, you can check Ultra HD quality, and you can also check super sampling. But just a friendly heads up here, if your computer is a little bit older, this might stress your CPU just a little bit. In the audio menu, you don't really need to change anything here if you don't want to. Under input, I would recommend mapping your controller, and it does carry over from system to system, but you may have to tweak some things. For example, this is set up really nicely for SNES, but if I go to N64 here, you can see I do have to tweak a few different things. It does a really great job though at mapping this to try to be compatible with every single system out there. Under hotkeys here, these can be incredibly handy. So if you wanted a button dedicated to fast forward or save state or load state, this is where you'll do that. Under emulators, if you want emulators not showing up in your main menu, you can uncheck them here and they'll be hidden. If you only have a few systems or if you're never gonna play something like the Wonder Swan, you can uncheck this and hide it from your main menu selections. In the options menu, there is one thing that I do recommend checking if you have a fairly decent or fairly recent CPU, and that is run ahead. So this will greatly reduce input latency, but at the cost of CPU processing. So in fact here, it doubles your system requirements in order to run an emulator. If you're having trouble emulating the N64, if you check run ahead here, this will make things a lot worse. 
If you're running into frame rate issues in certain games, just uncheck Run Ahead and that should solve your issue. In addition to that, if you want the ability to rewind your games on the fly in real time, you absolutely can. If you don't like relying on save states, you don't have to worry about them. Click Rewind here and then go into your hotkeys and make sure Rewind is bound to a button. And then you've got the Rewind feature. Under Firmware, if you have specific BIOS files you want to use, you absolutely can and you can set them up in here. Under Paths, if you want to specify certain locations for your home, your saves and your screenshots and your debugging files, you absolutely can and you can do that here. And last up under Drivers, by default the video driver is OpenGL 3.2. You can change this to Direct3D 9 or DirectDraw 7 or GDI if you want. I do recommend keeping it at OpenGL just to see how things go. If you're running into issues, maybe try a different driver altogether. On top of that, you can change your audio here. If you're not getting audio to the right place, you can switch that up if you want. And you can change the behavior. If you click off the emulator, by default it does pause your game. But if you want to keep things running, you can change that by clicking block input or allow input. It's completely up to you. Once you are done with your settings, you can now load up a game. So I'm going to go to load Nintendo and Super Nintendo here, and I'm just going to load up an SNES game. And that is it. You can see it's loaded up. It's running at 60 frames a second. Now changing the screen size on this is simple and straightforward. You can just drag and drop and it'll automatically adjust your resolution. If you go under tools here, you've got your save states and your load states and you can even capture screenshots. Under settings here, if you want to change how this looks on the fly, you absolutely can. At the end of the day here, I am a big fan of Ares. It's focused on accuracy. It's easy to set up. It's not convoluted and it's a fun little emulator. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about Ares in the comments below. Are you going to check it out? Have you already checked it out? And what are your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.